cultivate your faith with the pure Word of God. Hello, friends. Peace and grace be multiplied unto you. Welcome to Cultivate Your Faith, a presentation of the pure Word of God. Here we grow by expecting and depending on the sure promises of God to fulfill in a personal way. Here's your host, Dr. Troy Campbell. Hello, my friends. We will continue our study of the sanctuary. Our goal is to understand Christ in a personal way. In the previous episode, we followed Christ through the gate of the sanctuary. In this presentation, we will enter the courtyard and stop at the altar of sacrifices. You know, I read recently that when you enter upon a study of the Word of God, you need no pre-knowledge. You need not to bring anything with you. All you need is a submission or is to submit to the Holy Spirit because He is our teacher. Our study of the sanctuary is an intense and deep study. And we barely scratch the surfaces, but if we allow the Holy Spirit, He will teach us essential things that will help us to cultivate our faith. I ask you, my friends, to be focused and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. These are not the most entertaining studies. These studies aren't designed to make you feel good about yourself or to get a certain emotional reaction. I invite you to submit to the teachings of the Holy Spirit and to focus your minds on His words. And if needs be, replay these episodes and go to the Bible itself where I often reference different passages. Our focus is on the Word of God, and we are asking Him to help us, to teach us things that will seal our faith in Him. Let us pray to begin today's episode. Father, our desire is to learn of Christ through His words by the Spirit. Amen. The Courtyard The Courtyard As we begin today's episode... Keep this text in mind, Hebrews 2, 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Friends, it is important to always contemplate the precious fact that Christ came to the earth and became subject to death for you and for me, for us. In the previous episode, we were reminded that Christ is the gate. He is the way back to the kingdom of God. He came to this earth, which is the courtyard of the sanctuary, and he bids us to come, come as we are. John 1 verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Verse 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But there is hope, my friends. Verse 12, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, 
but of God. And the Word was made flesh, verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John summarizes it quite well. But I want to highlight the fact that we are called to believe on his name. Paul makes it clear that believing comes first. Romans 4 verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath therefore to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed in God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham learned to not depend on his flesh, but to believe in the life-giving power of the living word of God, the coming Messiah. For this he was counted righteous. Abraham believed that one day in the future, Christ would enter the court of the earthly sanctuary the earth. So, my friends, as we begin this journey, it is important for us to believe in the saving power of the life of God, the promised Savior. We are living after the fact that Christ came, but this study is meaningful as we are to experience his life, his death, his resurrection. And today, as our mediator, in the heavenly sanctuary. Romans 9 verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, not to appear in the presence of God for us. Today he is in heaven, but he came to the earth first, the courtyard, his courtyard the courtyard of the sanctuary. The sanctuary service illustrates Christ's work for our salvation. The earthly sanctuary as described in Exodus 25 to 31 and 35 to 40 included the courtyard and the sanctuary building. The sanctuary building had two compartments referred to as the holy place and the most holy place. So there are three compartments to our study. The courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy place. These three compartments, we will later learn, can be seen as three phases of the believer's journey to the kingdom of God. The court, which typifies Christ's earthly ministry. The holy place, which typifies Christ's initial work when he returned to heaven after offering his life as the Lamb of God at Calvary, and the most holy place, which typifies his work in the judgment room of heaven today. These three phases also represent three aspects of our salvation. The service in the court typifies our imputed justification, the services in the holy place typifies the imparted sanctification. And the services in the most holy place typifies our eventual glorification upon Christ's return as our eternal King. My friends, this study is deep and rich, and each of these presentations I refer to as a bite size, which we apply to our lives in a personal way. Now, by the power of the Spirit, our teacher, which shall reveal all truth to us, let us focus on the courtyard. It is not how much we know, but how much we will learn. All we need is the Spirit and he will teach us the truth of God. John 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is all we need, along with the power of the Holy Spirit. Immediately, 
In front of the sanctuary was the laver, and between the laver and the gate was the altar. So, now let's go forward from the gate. We enter the courtyard from the eastern end of the structure through the gate, which represents Christ. That was the focus of our previous episode. It might be more appropriate to say we enter through Christ, as he is the gate. He himself is the way and the life. The first article of furniture in the court is the altar of sacrifices. Exodus 25 describes. Exodus 27 through 1 and 8 describe. It provides good details, and I invite you to take the time and read at your own pace these passages of scriptures that we will be covering. Verse 1, And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits, and thou shalt make the horns of it up in the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes, and his shovels, and his basins, and his flesh hooks, and his fire pans, all the vessels Thereof thou shalt make of brass, and thou shalt make for it a gate of network of brass, and up in the net shalt thou make four basins, rings in the four cor- corners thereof. And thou shalt put in under the compass of the altar beneath, that the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be up in the two sides of the altar to bear it. Hollow with boards shalt thou make it, as it was shewed thee in the mount, so shall they make it. This was the description given to Moses on how to build the altar. This is the first item of furniture in the courtyard as we enter through the gates and walk toward the altar going westward. You see, a summary of these details can be found, again, and I've said before, in a presentation noted on the cultivateyourfaith.com titled, The Court and the Altar. The Court and the Altar. Now, The altar represents the cross where the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1 verse 24, there he was slain. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13 verse 8. Here believers picture Christ nailed to the cross, bearing the consequences of our sins. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Without Christ we were condemned as transgressors of the laws of God. 1 John 3 verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law For sin is the transgression of the law. The cross is the only possible way to heaven. Christ did for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He lived a perfect life. Then he took on our sins, gave us his life, and he died our death. What a blessed exchange. 1 John 1 verse 9 reminds us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Furthermore, Christ Himself says in John 6 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. My friends, We ought to go to Christ just as we are. 
He paid the full price for our sins, and to try and fix ourselves before going to him is to cheat God of his sacrifice. Did you understand that? He paid the full price for our sins, and to try and fix ourselves before going to him is to cheat God of his sacrifice. Let me demonstrate. My favorite fruit, a mango, is called East Indian mango. If I should go to the store and buy myself a bucket of East Indian mangoes, and on my way out of the store, the security person checks and says, Sir, you have too many, or you have one too many mangoes in your basket. I will have to return one to the store. This would definitely take me outside of my cultivated character because I paid the full price for all my mangoes and no power could stop me from taking my bucket of sweet East Indian mangoes out of the store. My friend, this is to say that Christ has paid for all of our sins, and he deserves all of our sins, not some. Go to him as you are and give it to him. It is his. He paid for it. A closer look at the altar reveals, your lamb shall be white without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Exodus 12 verse 5. Christ our Lamb was without sin, without blemish, innocent as a lamb led to the altar of sacrifice. We will remember in the first presentation for this series how Adam was required to cut the lamb's throat. What a dreaded situation for Adam, the same way the sinner during the time of Israel was required to cut the innocent lamb's throat, which typified Christ. Our sins killed the lamb of God. The lamb was then placed on the altar where it was consumed by fire. According to Leviticus 9 verse 24, this fire originally came down from heaven. Now follow. This shows God the Father participates in the sacrificial services. I imagine the heart of God the Father as he pictures his only begotten Son on the cross. My friends, have you given thought to the consequences of your sins? Does the sacrifice of Christ create a disdain, a hatred in your heart for your sins and the sinning? Each item on the altar represents Christ. And again, you will find the details in the, in the presentations listed on cultivateyourfaith.com. But for now, I want to highlight the fact that the altar was made of brass, among the many things, according to Sarah Peck, brass also represents victory through suffering and sacrifice. At the altar, Christ won the victory through sacrifice, won our victory through his sacrifice. He was made perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2 verse 10, not perfect in character, really, for he was always that, but perfect in our Redeemer, being our Redeemer, since he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. He is perfect in that line of business, in saving man from their sins. Only thus could he sympathize with those who fall under temptation. Only thus could he be made a merciful and faithful high priest. Hebrews 2, 17 and 18. He is the captain of our salvation. My friends, 
As we embark on this journey of cultivating our faith through the understanding of the sacrificial services, as Christ leads us through the different compartments of the sanctuary, we must believe, we must believe in what Christ has done for us, and not only believe, but experience, as in, in our daily lives, we must follow Christ, our Redeemer. Remember, Jesus saith that he is the way the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friends, it is not just to study and hoard a knowledge of God, but to live and experience. Picture yourself in the courtyard with Jesus. As he committed himself to you, you should do the same. I imagine what he gave up to, to regain us. He gave up his glory for the cross. We must accept Christ's sacrifice or the sacrifice of Christ. He gave his life at the cross. So if we are following him, then what must we give up at the altar of sacrifice? What must we give up? Accept his reconciliation by faith. Without it, we shall continue to follow fleshy lusts which war against the soul. Peter says in 1 Peter 2 verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul. War is against our soul, the things of this world. Do not love the world and the things that are in the world. 1 John 2 verse 15, we must not love the things of the world. But my friends, more than this, we are called to not just give up our sins at the cross or at the altar of sacrifice, but to give our plans, our very plans, our future, our very lives completely to him. He gave his holy life that we might give him our broken lives. Is that clear? Matthew 22 verse 37 says, Jesus himself said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Can we help ourselves but to love him completely? One of the favorite quotes taken from the desire of ages, page 25. Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins, in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness, in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. With his stripes, we are healed. The lyrics of the song, You're My King, Amazing Love by Billy James, comes to my mind. I am forgiven because you were forsaken. I am accepted. You were condemned. And I am alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I am forgiven because you were forsaken. I am accepted. You were condemned. I am alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. How can it be that you my king should die for me. Amazing love. And I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you. In our next study, we will consider the next piece of furniture, the laver, which typifies our cleansing. My friends, I invite you to share these presentations with your friends and with your family. 
I leave you with the theme text for this series, John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thanks for listening to Cultivate Your Faith. We cultivate our faith by feeding on the Word of God. By sharing we receive, by receiving we grow. Will you share as you have received? Join us next week as we continue our journey. Go to cultivateyourfaith.com to sign up to our email list, subscribe for new episodes, and find the resources mentioned in the show notes. Until next time.